Good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome to Noman Art Jam today. Uh, we're going to be having some fun making some art. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to make something from a concept, which is something we haven't really done before. So we're going to uh, explore uh, Art Station for a little bit. I've got some ideas up of what I'd like to do. This is probably going to be something or evening, I guess. Yeah, good, good evening, afternoon, good morning. Uh, depending on where you're at, I got some ideas of who, what artists I'm going to use as my artists. I'm going to use as my uh, concept we're going to make. I'll probably make this over the next several weeks. This is something we haven't really done uh, on Art Jam before is make something from a concept. So I think it's going to be a little different, uh, which I'm actually kind of excited about. So uh, as you can see, we got ZBrush up here. Uh, we've got some tunes going in the background, which I'll turn up here in a minute. Just some lo-fi beats. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything today, Nomen, uh, program process, anything like that, please let me know. I'm happy to answer those as best I can. Um, right now, I'm actually just going to pull over Art Station. This is my Art Station. And we'll swap this around so you can see a little bit more of what we're looking at. Um, I'm also going to change our branding so it looks like uh, this. There we go. This is my art station here. In case you've never seen any of my work, my name's Josh Herman. I'm the CCO of Nomen, the Chief Creative Officer. Um, professional projects, some personal projects that I've worked on. And a lot of this stuff I've done is either concept art or as a modeler, so a little bit of both. And so in the almost every stream we've been doing on Art Jam, I think at this point we're probably... 35 episode 35 weeks in which is insane uh, welcome to november um we haven't really modeled anything from a concept so what i like to do is browse art station uh i like to go to my likes or, or friends of my likes uh or followers so what i'll do is i'll follow somebody like let's see i follow see somebody who i follow who i know could be interesting ashley adams is a, a sculptor who's on the pixelogic stream a lot Matthew Helen is an awesome artist. Jason Martin is an awesome artist. There's a ton of people who are great in here. But what I do is actually go there and then I look at the things that they like and then see if there's something interesting in there that I might want to make from a concept. A lot of 3D stuff on Ashley, so I'm going to close that. Matt's also has quite a bit of 3D. These are 3D artists, so it doesn't shock me. But I'm looking for a 2D concept that we can turn into 3D because that's kind of what I'm interested in doing today. It's also just kind of fun to browse this work. 
can also go into my likes show you some previous artists i've already pulled over a couple uh, one of my favorite artists that i follow is Corey hubble uh, he's worked at a bunch of different places but you can probably recognize some of the things he's worked on here uh, he does some really fun as far as like something maybe small we could work on uh, these little robots which are pretty cool hello sketchbook from india you want to be an animator no i cannot buy you the animator survival kit sorry so Corey hubble does some cool stuff i've also been looking at ariel perez's work I'm a big fan of this work uh kind of a more of a dark fantasy style some of this So trying to see something that would be fun to make. Got some interesting forms, some cool form development. Also, another person we could look at is my friend Phil Saunders. He does some really cool form development. Veteran movie guy Phil Saunders. I think I'm kind of drawn to either Corey's work today or Ariel's work. Just some really interesting shapes that are going on in here. I like this one quite a bit. We've been do doing so much kind of creepier, spookier things that I want to change up what we've been doing. Um, see if we can find something that's slightly different huge fan of Bjorn's work this is a pretty fun one I'm gonna tag that one A lot of this stuff is already made, so I'm trying to choose things that uh, not that are not already made in a game or something like that. Some fun sci-fi stuff over here. It's like lawbreakers, sci-fi. I love sketches like this because there's just so many cool things in here. Like this is a great some really cool shapes in here so as you can see i'm kind of choosing between a couple of these i think i'm gonna go with this one though so bjorn if you ever happen to watch we're gonna make this from our stream i'm gonna save this over here also download it which is easier as well Yeah, you can suggest an artist, absolutely. Just making my folders. Jones is a great artist as well. He's got a lot of really cool stuff. I've tried to make some of his stuff before, but uh, some of these forms are so complicated. All right. So I think we're going to run with this one for now. In case you didn't see, that would be this one. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to leave it up. Uh, I'm going to get it in to Quadro, which is the program we were using before for our overlays. So I'm going to open that up in just a minute. So adding a local image, which you guys can't see. 
just going through some amazingly fun file management stuff. Basically, it creates uh, this, which I can now put on top and lay on top for for a while. It's trying to save the preset for some reason. So I'm going to put this over here. And I will save this as a file. So the next time I want to open it, it'll already be there. And then I can kind of work on the side and have this up. I can also select this and hit always on top so that now I can start working in ZBrush and I won't have any issues. So let's explore making uh, this. I think it's a cool piece and I'm excited to kind of do something that's that's uh, more based off of a concept. Um, what we're actually gonna do, or you know, we can obviously have this here, um, but the best way for me to actually start is to actually go back into 2D. And I'm actually, even though I just did all that uh, work, I'm gonna take this and say, not always on top anymore. We're gonna take this image and we're gonna start in 2D in Photoshop. So let's get this thing in Photoshop here. And what I like to do when I'm working on a conceptual, on a piece that is based off of a concept, is I'm going to break this down into some of its smaller pieces. Uh, I do this in some of the classes that I teach of talking about how to start approaching a piece of art, right? How to approach something. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to trace this. And this doesn't have to take long, and I'm not gonna spend a terribly long time on it, but I'm going to outline the shapes of everything. Almost like I'm getting the silhouettes. Just to get the shape. What this does is once I've got the whole character done, and we won't spend more than five, maybe 10 minutes on this, uh, is I'll be able to see the character not as all the details, but as everything else that makes up the character. The shapes, the silhouettes, and it'll make it a lot easier for me to kind of, you know, establish forms and sizes and shapes afterwards. I'm letting this overlap here because all I really need is to put this underneath the layer that I'm just making now. And I'm grouping this stuff into relatively large sections. So I'm not gonna do every little thing like this. That'll be a bit of a waste of my time. What I'm gonna do is just do the large individual pieces. So we'll get like this one, for example. I could probably break some of these down into multiples, but again, the point of this is not necessarily To get every single detail it's to establish form relationships and sizes so we know proportionally how big everything here should be so this is a little bit of a quiet zen moment for me i don't have to really do i'm going to move this over because i just color changed it i draw one and then i can come in here hit control u color shift it a little bit then i can choose that color i'm going to put it over here This is not how we make beautiful art, but it's how we understand it. And I think that's a separate thing and it's very important to think about. So I'm gonna draw these blue ones. Now, actually I'll take these this orange again and I'm gonna put this here. I want these two shoulder pads to kind of overlap as far as a color because they do overlap so closely that I wanna understand them as a relationship that is tightly connected, meaning they group together. Meaning if you squint, when I turn all this color off, when you squint, 
they kind of join into a single form or a single shape with your eyes. And that means as an artist, when I'm making that, I want that to happen. I don't want it to feel like they're separate pieces. What I'm going to do is just color pick this and maybe just slightly adjust it away. But that means that at distance, they'll probably still read similarly shaped, but I don't have to worry about that. Now, yes, we are going to do this over almost the entire character. So if you're bored of this already, uh, come back in about five to ten minutes. And then we'll be done. Uh, when I teach this uh, character modeling classes or teach people how to, to model a character, uh, this is one of the first things I do. And often I get a lot of people you know, in the first, and we do this in the very first class, and uh, they complain about it all the time. They're like, this is a waste of time. Do you really do this every single time? Um, what you'll notice is that it's more about you, you know, the artist's right now like you guys watching might not get a lot out of this but I'm getting a lot out of this and that's what's more important shift this one to a totally different color oh. it seems to keep resetting on me Trying to keep it just off so that those all kind of create one large group here. Now, for the rest of these, we can start color picking other things. I'll make some more layers. I'm not going to go through every single rib. That is not important. This overall big piece here is not very important as well. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is just kind of do something like this. This is our general rib cage size and shape. Kind of cuts in here. And this is not at all about details. It's not even really about silhouette. It's just about proportion. Let's choose another one that we've done before. This is overall gesture. Get this metal piece here. Some areas that are more detailed might require like a more slightly more you know finessed touch. Some do not. So I'm going to say like this piece probably is going to have a specific proportional relationship we're going to want to understand, which is the same as this. Now we're going to make another layer. We're going to keep doing this all the way down the character. I'm not going to do every single bit here. We're going to wrap this up relatively quickly. Uh, this morning over here, it is 10.18. That's what time it is. I'm going to group this knee pad into the upper section. No, I'm going to keep it separate. I lied. You're all doing well up there. Welcome to November. The first November art jam.
It's 12 there. That's super late. Look at how beautiful this character is. I'm sure Bjorn, if he saw it, would be like, what the hell are you doing? There's a method to this madness, I promise. So I'm separating the upper arm from the lower arm here. Probably the best start you've ever seen on this stream, hands down. good though i think it'll be fun to do a different kind of kind of piece that we don't normally do i really enjoy making things from concepts every now and then i love doing concept work from scratch i love that process um because it's just so fun but um you're always making your own thing and i think that's Taking a break to, to learn from what somebody else is doing is, is an incredibly important part of being an artist. That's what I'm going to treat this as. Every time I do a piece of art that is based on somebody else's work, um, using this as an opportunity to learn. This is Bjorn's work, so what is Bjorn doing to make this look so cool? And this is my first step in understanding that, breaking it down, deconstructing it. The sword we could break down into a bunch of different pieces later, and we probably will. Is there any effect in the industry because of COVID? There is. You've seen some of the uh, productions end up getting shut down for a little while, but you're starting to see uh, a big benefit in some ways as things like virtual production are really kicking off. I've heard some really positive news about that recently. I've heard some really positive, you know, a lot of companies are uh, still working entirely remote. So a little bit of a shutdown for some things as, as um Film projects were on hold, obviously, but it sounds like at the moment they're beginning to kick up again. And things like virtual production and things like games, uh, animation are all booming. So uh, yes and no, depending on the way that you're thinking about it. Shield we could do at some point. I'm going to break it down into just a couple simpler shapes. Again, not really the point right now of trying to understand everything that within this. This is just understanding what makes it cool. There we go. I kept having a missing line in there. Another thing this is good for, and we'll get to this later, is understanding the types and amounts of pieces that we're going to make. Uh, today, my goal for this is to do a block in. What a block in means is get all the general shapes. They're not necessarily going to be 
in the right size or proportion, but to, to get everything in. Uh, think of it as uh, if you're building a model kit from scratch or, you know, or you get some Legos, right? And you got a new, new Lego set. Thing is you have a box and you open up the box and you dump it out on the floor and you get all those little baggies out and you look at them. You make sure you got all your pieces. That's what we're doing. We're making sure we got all our pieces today. Now, obviously, we want them to ideally be in the same proportions, and we'll we'll work our way to that. But let's make sure we got everything in the in the box first. How much is the average salary of a 3D artist in the industry? That really ranges pretty vastly. I don't know if there's an average. I'm sure you could look at a tool or something like Glassdoor, uh, which might have some information for you there. There we go, guys. We did it. This is beautiful artwork that we just made. But I am going to save it as a... Uh, called him the Strange Night. So I'm going to call it Strange Night. Right down. And we'll get into this even further as we move forward. What you're going to see, though, is I'm going to group all this as I just did. I'm going to collapse the group so you can see before and after. Obviously, it's beautiful what we've done as we've completely broken the stage. Um, but now we get to see the individual relationships of everything as if just a block of color rather than something that's got all this beautiful detail and rendering that you want to put in there. Right. Now what you can do on top of this is I just take the opacity here and I just crank it down. Now I can look at the individual pieces and I can begin breaking down those shape relationships as well. So that's part of why up here, what you're seeing as I made some of these colors be grouping to a similar value. I can always come in and break these apart. I can change them if I want. That's why I did, did them all in separate layers. But lowering it now gives me an idea of I'm no longer making this just a, a beautiful uh, strange night, as he called it. Um, and trying to figure out what makes it look cool, I can break it down and say, all right, I'm making this helmet, and this is roughly the shape that the helmet needs to be. And then not only that, I can then break this down and say, okay, within this shape, this blue uh, that I have right here, here's some of the lines that I need to create and how it's gonna work. And I can continue to do this later. So what I could do, for example, and just to give you one, Tiny and quick example. So I'm going to put another layer on here because something I'm going to have to do at some point is I'm going to have to make this mask, this sort of almost Iron man -y style mask. And what I'm going to do is just outline the shape of it. This is on a layer on top. I'll fill that. Again, I don't need the details inside. This is general shape, general value. And now what I can do is crank this all the way back up. And that gives me another set of information, which is how big is the mask inside of this volume? And that's something I can play with. So just for fun, I'm going to put that at the very top here. Okay. So we've got this piece here, which is great. This is a really good starting point. And on the right, what we're going to do before we get into any ZBrush, before we get into any Maya making any meshes, even though we do have a starting point here, um, I'm going to just dictate and write down what we need this is going to be a little silly probably and it sounds like it's not like it's it's an unnecessary thing but it's the truth and this is an easy way to to kind of create a checklist for yourself of what you need so i've got my thing here and i'm going to say we need one helmet you know, we could just make a little list on the side i'm actually just going to extend this crop thing like this, I don't need it to be that blue background, so I'm gonna make it uh, black. We'll fit our screen here, fill our screen in fact, so you guys can see. Uh, I'm gonna use blue, assuming you guys can see that all right. So I have one X helmet. Uh, we'll saw and we'll say like one color. 
whatever this thing is. Uh, two X shoulder pads. I'm grouping this whole area into a single group. I just one scarf. One uh, rib. Abdomen. Now this may seem simple, but this is also part of the process of what we're doing right now is actually breaking down the object. So there's something about going through something and saying, you know, I need uh, two iPads and one loincloth and two uh, thigh guard. Well, those are kind of the same Th uh, thighs. Mm. Two knee pads. Two shin. There's something about writing something down that ingrains it into your brain a little bit further. Boot slash shoes. Um, arms to upper arm to lower to call this uh, to lower to bracers Two hand, one sword, one shield. And then I kind of look around and I say, uh, we have some ribbons, loose cloth. Four to ten loose cloth. Now this may seem like, duh, this is exactly what's on the picture, but okay, this is what we need to make now. So when I go start making base meshes, I can create this mental list. Uh, or I apparently didn't put that on a new layer, which is a bummer, but it, we'll cover that in a minute, I guess. Um, I can come in here and I can look at all this now and really start breaking it down. So we need all these elements. This is what makes it up. And then uh, we're going to be good to go. And this is a really cool piece, so I'm excited. Um, with that, I'm going to take what I have here. I'm going to throw this on my other monitor, so you're probably not going to see it for the rest of the stream. Uh, but I will save it again. And put it over here. And here now you see what we have. I am going to actually take, though, before I, before I say that any further, I'm going to copy this. What I'm doing, you can't see. Uh, I'm copying this, probably at a slightly higher value with all these colors in it. I really wish I would have wrote that on the correct layer. Another layer. It's just be distracting. But I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select what I've got with all this color breakup that I did at a kind of a medium opacity. I'm going to copy it, make a new uh, document. Copy. Having some weirdness going on with Quadro. New. Okay. Paste. Drop this out. save this into this folder images a little jpeg action breakdown save oh i see it was creating it in my other panel because you can just copy things straight there but that's not really what i wanted so i'm going to minimize my photoshop we're going to get that out of the way we're going to go here into our quadro 
and then we have it here as well. So I can bring this in as well. Sounds like the video quality is very low. That seems disappointing. It's seeming okay on my side of the stream. Is anybody else having issues with the video quality? Looks like 360. Interesting. All right, hang on one second. Getting it up on my side as well, just to make sure. Oh, that looks terrible. All right, let me see what I can do. Sorry about this. says it should be in 1080. I'm wondering if there's something we can do on this side. My side I know you. I would pull it on the screen so you could see it, but it's interesting that it's not working for you. Maybe because we're trying to stream at 1080, maybe it's having some issues. Uh, I'm gonna check my internet speed. Looks better now. Not looking great for me yet. I'm going to give it a minute. My upload is at 8, which isn't great, but it should be enough. I look pixelated, but the window's okay. What is happening? I might lose you guys for a minute, but I might try switching to a different uh, Wi-Fi network because that's what I'm on. So we're going to try this real quick and see if it fixes anything. on the other network, which has a much faster down. And a much faster up, so I'm gonna stay on this one. It looks like the window itself is a little better, but I still look really terrible. So I'm gonna try uh, removing myself from the stream. adding myself to the stream which seems a little better Let's see if that does anything for us Let's 
seems to have worked a little bit. Thank you guys for giving me the uh, heads up there. It's always nice to have a little bit of help if things are looking weird or odd. But yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, seems like it's just some weird setting or maybe the Wi-Fi network I was on. So let's continue uh, with what we were doing. So we had taken these images. I'm putting them in Quadro, which is that, that image program we were using. I'm going to hit always on top. Oop, I duplicated. That's not the one I wanted. Uh, looks like I've got some more that have appeared over here. I'm going to close those. I'm going to go into my Quadro settings, which you cannot see. I'm going to save them as my setting. Open up our ZBrush. Close our ZBrush. Always on top. Always on top. Boom. There we go. Now I have these. Can obviously move them around if I need to. Size them, scale them. Uh, these are somewhat important for now because this is what we're going to be making. So I'm not going to make these massive, but I am going to kind of keep these right here so that we have them. I'm going to keep my uh, Twitch stream over on the right, so hopefully it doesn't get... Actually, just for bandwidth reasons, I'm going to close it. If there's any more video problems, like, hey, it's getting really bad, please let me know. All right, so let's get making some stuff. So we had that list of stuff. We have these pieces here. Uh, right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to begin getting all the pieces in place. Right. Whenever you start a project, again, think of it like you're making a Lego set. You're going to come in and you're going to dump all the pieces out. Right. And you're going to say, what do I need to make? What do I not have? What do I have? And that's where we're going to begin. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly pose this character. That's something you've probably seen me do before. I am using the base mesh that I use pretty much on everything else, except that it looks like I chose the incorrect one because this one has toes and I don't want him to have toes. So we're going to import again. The one with shoes, which means I need to scale this around again. So that means he has boots rather than little, little toes at the end. Whenever I see this, it always reminds me of that Shia LaBeouf video. The world cannibal. Shia LaBeouf. He's standing right behind you. I got a hotkey here to uh, group those things. So once it's masked, I can hit Control M on my side to create a real quick poly group, which makes it just much, much, much easier to uh, access this. And what I start doing at this point is I start saving religiously, um, just because I really don't want to have to deal with, you know, something going bad so I think this was called the strange night a one so we'll call this strange night a one well we got this we got this other head on top the other head on top I likely won't be using as a face because there's no face here in the actual character um, I scale this one up a little bit because it's be better to actually see what these objects are and this is more of a breakdown so again this artwork is by bjorn hurry i believe that's how you say the last name if i'm saying that wrong i apologize but he's awesome does really really cool work uh this is mostly gonna be something that i'm gonna move around and, and turn into this helmet but again that isn't really what we need right now we're gonna take this and pose it really quickly so i'm gonna grab this switch to our action lines here and move this stuff around into something that is going to be a little more uh, appropriate. Right now, I am using uh, Quadro. I can take this and put a photo overlay. I can put even like this. I could you know, duplicate this. Oh, look how many times that duplicated. This program is, full disclosure, slightly buggy. Uh, but you can come in here and lower the opacity and keep it on top. So if you really wanted to, uh, you can kind of come in here. Uh, 
and put this on top. So if you want to use an overlay, you can continue to do that. I might try that for now. Let's give it a shot. I'll make it a little more, a little more and always on top so that I can bring it over and kind of do this thing uh, to, to gauge how something's going to fit in there. But again, this is more about getting proportions. So I'm going to grab all this stuff and I'm going to take it and I'm going to break it. I don't really care at this point about what the the ace mesh is going to look like. I'm just going to take this thing and really destroy it, for lack of a better term. Um, to fit what I feel like it needs to be. My hands are actually quite small, which is something I'm paying attention to. And I'm going to use this head here as just a size reference. You know, how big is the head in comparison to everything? We're going to go and hide this. Again, this isn't about making all the shapes right now. We're just trying to get proportional relationships. Also hit V to go into pure black, which for some reason, okay, there we go, to kind of do the same kind of thing. So I'm going to take all the rest of these little bits here. We'll end up probably smashing this head in to something really tiny. So let's just do that now. I said not needed but maybe we'll use it for like the top some of this geo for where some of these top pieces are right now and then i'm going to take this i'm actually going to go into our geometry with this out of the way geometry dynamesh we're going to just Switch this into 64. We don't need that. We don't need these ears. We don't need this face. Might be nice to have a humanoid head in there so we can, you know, say that a humanoid head fits in there, uh, but you don't really have to. We got that here. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. One of these is going to act as the head and sort of that central bucket of the helm. The other one is going to be the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is uh, deformation, deflate this all just slightly so that it's inside. And I'm going to start carving this out. I think this is going to go further out the actual element. So I'm just getting it out enough that I can actually mask it. And I'm going to pull it. Make it like this. When you get into concept art that's only drawn from one angle, uh, you will, will at certain points have to decide for yourself where certain things are going. So it looks like this kind of wraps around the back, which means I'm going to have to figure out what the back of this looks like. Have I used a Cintiq type product for 3D? Is it worth investing in? Worth the time to use it or not? Uh, I think that's all up to personal preference. I know that's a cop-out answer, but um, I have used them before. I like them. They're a little expensive for me, and the thing that I don't, uh, love about them, which is something that's kind of counterintuitive after you've 
seems kind of intuitive because it's the point of a Cintiq is I don't like my hand being in the way of what I'm working on. Like if I'm bringing my hand up, uh, often it's getting in the way. And I also find that my hand gets really hot. Sometimes you have to wear a little glove to make it like not feel like it's like ee across the surface when it's like all gets kind of gross and sweaty. But it's something I don't love about a Cintiq. But they're cool. They're definitely a cool product. Definitely not needed. Absolutely not. I think there was an artist who has a painter. I think his name is called Loopy Dave uh, that I saw at a conference last year. And um, he paints with a mouse. Insane to me. So we're going to mask all this, invert it, start meshing around with this. We know that these are obviously thinner, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lengthen them quite a bit. So again, base proportions before I get into too much moving around. You can start to see it coming through. a certain persona that this character has so we'll definitely be wanting to achieve that now for the profile we've done nothing right uh, as far as this is concerned I can bring this here though and maybe we'll just quickly see how this is going it's a little early to get into this stuff right the actual sizes and shapes but you can kind of get what I'm getting at the overall width is getting close. The head size is maybe a little too small, too thin. Uh, but you can kind of see where we're getting with this. I'm going to leave this over here just in like a little window if we need it. And as we ramp up, it's getting warm in here. So take this flannel off. Now the challenge when you start getting into this stuff is now we're going to have to be doing a lot of back and forth a lot of back and forth. We're going to have to figure out, you know, exactly how much is um, we have to find one point that we feel good about, and then we can start moving things around it. How does one think of creative concept art reference for making them in 3D? Interesting. Uh, are you saying? Finding more references? Is that the question you're asking? Um, looks like we got another question. Do I request more concept art to fill in the areas that aren't clear? Uh, what I would do if this is a, a full on production is I would probably be, I would be pretty confident working just from a, a three quarter view like this. Obviously, the back view is going to be completely open-ended so I, I at that point i might be asking for a, what a back view would be um but what i kind of do to start is just you know do my best shot first so which is what we're going to do today so we've got you know within an hour we've got a very simple block out we've got a good breakdown of this we've got a couple pieces in here right that we're going to be playing with and i think we're, we're at a good start this is 101, right? This is where it starts. This is how we get there. There's a lot to do, but this is the beginning. So before I go ahead and start breaking this into a lot of different pieces, uh, I'm going to just spend a little bit of time sculpting on it. So what I'm going to do is move around some of these elements. from profile. 
And I'm going to try to also get our, our pose in. Uh, this pose that I have right now is fine. It, it will work. Uh, but there's still some big uh, elements here that are not really working. Um, so I'm going to take this. I actually realize that these hands, you can see here, uh, the hands go down to the kneecap. And so the kneecap is here, which means my hands need to be more about this length. So this is something we're going to be evaluating back and forth constantly, not just the length of the hands, but just generally the overall proportions of the project. How is it working? How is it looking? What's the size? And we're going to be comparing this to this all the time. And we're going to want this up all the time. We're going to be trying to evaluate the sizes, the shapes, the relationships, the design as often as possible. So what I want to do is get a little bit of this gesture in now. So I'm going to tilt this head a little bit because I like how this is kind of working. Uh, going up to my other one using the replay last feature. I'm going to get some of this posture here. Right, this is something that we need quite a bit. This kind of posture. Now, what, what I often find that happens is an artist who's working from a piece of concept art uh, like I am, you only have one and you only have one view like I do, is you focus on that view only. And that can be a big mistake because right now we may say, oh, this is starting to, it's starting to get there, right? I understand how this could eventually look like this. But when I rotate it, it looks like a completely different character. And that's the thing that we want to avoid. And so that's why we need to start taking account into actually like the shading which is what is the volume of some of these spaces? And from what I can tell, this is a pretty broad object. So if we were to go into uh, Photoshop here, right, uh, we'll take this and we'll make a layer. And what I would say is that this, like my caps lock is on. From the top, I'll turn this color off. It feels like there is a roundness to this shape. Right. Generally, that there's probably a roundness to this shape that because I can see this light kind of coming off and it's catching these here, that to me means that there's a consistent highlight. And even though there is some variation in the shape itself, maybe if it kind of goes up, right, up like this, but from a top view, it probably looks something like this because I can see this kind of going into the back. Now what I need to start figuring out once I break these shoulder pads down is how far back does this go? How forward is this? We see that this is sort of a long consistent highlight. So what I'm going to start doing is actually breaking down these forms a little further once we get into it. Uh, and that'll be kind of a fun experience. But right now that means I need to make these larger from the profile. How far out in the how uh, the head, let's talk about the relationship from a profile of the head to the chest. How much does the head sit from a profile over the chest? Or is it back behind the chest that makes the chest feel larger? This feels to me like it's pretty much in parallel or even over. So what I have is probably okay here, but there's still a large element that's more up here that's creating that bulk. So we're going to try to work on that as well. It just means these shoulder pads are going to be pretty large. Now, at this point, I am kind of hitting a little bit of a limit on my uh, geometry as far as what I can do. So I'm going to go in here and without smoothing the objects, because then we'll lose and it'll get really doughy. Uh, I'm going to turn off smooth, hit divide, and then do this again. This adds a little bit more subdivision level, but it also keeps some of that work in there. And I can start sculpting a little bit. I'm only sculpting at this point at a broad level. Uh, what I mean by that is I'm not going to come in and start doing individual details. I'm not concerned about this. I'm not concerned about this, about any of this. What I'm concerned about is what the overall shape is. The overall shape. And what I mean by the overall shape, is let's choose something that's a little bit brighter. That we can see. Maybe something more in line with this. Sure. What that means is I'm going to break this object down, and I see that there's a consistent highlight that goes from here to here. There's a consistent-ish highlight that runs through here. 
and it also runs around here. So that to me means there's one general flowing shape. I see this highlight here, and I see these highlights that Bjorn has put on this object here. To me, that means there's a consistent um, arc within this all. In, cons in, in uh, car design, it's called a bone. But basically, it means from a profile, there's a peak here that is going through the object. Uh, user roles, I refreshed my chat so I don't see your answer uh, question. Go ahead and ask that again, please. So I'm looking at what this overall shape is and how this is going to kind of play into just this generally large shape as it kind of goes back into space. So if I remove this, I'll put a black layer in here just so you can kind of see what I'm drawing. This is the shape that I'm trying to understand. What's the difference between hard surface modeling, Z modeler and ZBrush and conventional hard surface software modeling like Maya and Max? The difference is that you're not leaving a package and I think that uh, Z modeler has a lot of really interesting features, but it, uh, it's just different. Right? It's all within ZBrush, that's the real difference. Uh, it seems to be, from my experience, more focused on creating a high poly model, and it doesn't seem to have as much interest, even though you can, in creating a low poly model or something that's easily adjusted with things like holding edges. Um, that's, I think, the difference thing. The difference is you're going to get mostly a high poly model versus something that can also potentially be a low poly model. That's what I've seen. So this shape here is what we're looking to do. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to keep it up here. And actually keep this on so that I can uh, take this. And also see that there's a bone or another highlight that goes through here. I'm putting a little dotted line there. So this is kind of the overall shape of where my base form needs to be made. So now I can make that. I don't really care about all this stuff that's up here. I'm just going to smooth it out completely at this point. Smooth all this out completely. Using the standard brush to kind of start creating these lines. How much time would it take to get this piece ready for production? I would say this to be at least a, three weeks to a month. So this is again just proportional work. We're not really spending a bunch of time uh, getting things to be perfect. I am just going to start adjusting some of these shapes as well because they're starting to play into each other. Looks like the alpha disappeared here on our clay buildup brush. Uh, 
I should probably find a signature or something to put on here for Bjorn. But this is Bjorn's concept in case anybody is wondering, uh, not intending to, if that for some reason is all coming across, stealing worker concepts uh, from Bjorn. A comment, it sounds like that gold piece on the right shoulder looks like it's in the front of the shoulder but on the left shoulder it looks like it's on the side of the shoulder i assume you're talking about this piece uh to me what that means is yes so i'm having to take into account are the arms turned or are they straight right what is this piece going to look like and that's kind of what i was doing here that's why you saw me actually pull this back more from a profile which is maybe this is more what the profile looks like and not so much the front and this is probably what the front is going to look like but we might be able to do a little bit where we kind of create an in-between space but that is something that you as a 3 3d artist will be dealing with all the time which is taking the translation from 2d to 3d is not a, not an easy task I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, just draw it. It's it's already there. Just make it. And that's not exactly how it works. You're going to find inconsistencies, especially if somebody's not using 3D as their base, even when they are using 3D as their base like a concept artist or something like that, uh, often they'll, they'll break the model, they'll break perspective to get the design, to get the elements that they're wanting. And that's okay because they're getting something that's interesting looking. But it does make it slightly more challenging on the 3D artist to accommodate or to, uh, to make work. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually using this green one to start looking at this and saying, you know, what is the shape relationship of this rib cage? How far should this be sticking out here? Trying to save the tool. There we go. It takes these arms here and mask them. I bulk them up just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. They are skinny and they might be skinnier than that in some spots, but I'm wanting to some of these little shape relationships these tapers well eventually we'll build some of these other elements but that right now i'm not going to do all these heavy overlaps with just the single piece that i have uh, unless it's uh, easier so i'm looking at like where is this joint for example so this joint is uh right across the bottom of this piece all right, so I want to define this. This is something I defined here. So then I'll be able to figure out how long the arms are. So we're going to actually just hide the arms for a minute. Or well, maybe just this part of the arm. And we're going to draw out this piece here. I like to use the Damien Standard Brush as an element that can really help define shapes. Because it's a great carving tool. And then we can kind of use that to say, okay, there's going to be an element here. We know there's going to be a loincloth that's going to go here. So maybe we'll go ahead and get in a cube. So a pinned. A cube. Perfect. Make it nice and small. This is that loincloth I mentioned in the initial thing. It's about yay wide, and it's going to be about middle of the thigh length. 
think my knees might be a little high. And all these little shape relationships are just things we're going to play around with. So I know that this is going to tie up into this. So I'm going to bring it up, pull this down. It's going to actually be in the body. So that's something we're going to have to figure out. There is sort of, when we look at uh, the, the concept, the general posture is really interesting to me. From a profile, um, what it looks like is that the head kind of has this angle, meaning this is forward. Right, so we kind of have this, it has these little things that stick off of it here. We have these really large shoulder pads. I can't quite tell how much, if they're, if they're this way or if they're this way. I think they're more like this. But the profile of the body has this sort of jutting, subtle jutting out. I could see that maybe this point here and this point here or somewhere in here, like are, are in line, close to in line. Then it cuts in really sharply. You can see how much of this is in shadow. And then it cuts back out. So there's this really in and out gesture to the body, and then it falls flat down. So in, so from a profile view, that means out, in, out, down. Now, how far these uh, this zigzag is, is happening is something that I want to establish early. You can see right now, I don't have it at all. So we got to capture that. So when I'm talking about a block in, like today's goal is to do a block in. That means I don't really care if I don't capture any detail, any overall shape on that today. As much as I want to get to the final result, it's more important for me to, to realize some of these shapes that are happening and be able to capture them. So I need to know, that, like, okay, this helmet looks like maybe it sticks a little farther forward. That's something we want to do. We want to come in here and get this shape in the middle. Definitely feels like, you know, this isn't a thing where the chest is bigger, right? That's not what this character is. This is, there's a central peak in the middle of the chest. There are some sort of columns here. So if I'm going to break this down even further, um, there's a clear highlight here, right? So what this is meaning to me is I'm seeing sort of a relationship where it's probably something like this. Assuming it kind of goes this way. But this is the overall shape relationship that we're getting here. We'll just say this kind of goes down, goes down. I can still see this line. You can see that very clear intention of all these lines kind of coming up and through that he's put in here. It's an assumption, obviously, but it seems to be relatively clear. And there's definitely something kind of coming through here. So now I put this on, you can actually begin to almost see the shapes coming through, right? This is the this is the block out that we're wanting to make. So we're just taking exactly what Bjorn's drawn here and we are, uh, you know, making it slowly. But this can only come through spending uh, that time to really sit there and evaluate the piece. See a lot of people make the mistake of just jumping straight into ZBrush and just sculpting. And that's fine. Like, I've seen some people who are really good at that. But if, you, you know, my opinion is that you take that little bit of time, and we haven't spent more than an hour so far, hour and 15 minutes, breaking this down, 
And I think you're already starting to see some of this coming through because we're evaluating the surface, because we're evaluating the concept. Rather than just saying, I'm going to sculpt it, starting in the head and modeling the helmet. Uh, you're not going to get as quick or as good of a result that way because you're not thinking through it. I'm using this side of the shoulder pad here for, for what I want the, the peak to look like. Have I ever worked with AE? Are you saying After Effects or what do you, what is AE? Now this is obviously the back. The back, I have no idea what the back looks like. Have I ever worked with After Effects? Yes, I have. I know that the shapes are relatively broad here. So when I go around the back, I'm just going to try to mimic those in some way. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the back here. Smooth here on the end of this. Spin this out. And so now we're going to start getting this relationship here. And this is what we've talked about. Uh, I can now, like I had said here, talking about this carve in. Now that I see this angle, this click, 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 click that we're working on, where it goes out in out out in out and start evaluating the proportions of that and so it's not perfectly in the middle it's slightly on the higher end meaning that if i just drew the easy ways to evaluate this is like let's come in here and we'll just choose another color red remove the actual image make it black and i'm going to make a new layer and just draw simple lines where those peaks are and then I'm going to turn off this layer, which, what is the separation here, right? So if I go and I move this and I duplicate it, I can tell you that it's not exactly 50-50, so it's probably 60-40-ish, right? So that means when I have it right here and it's about 50-50, I know that's incorrect. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit further. Now that seems like a really small move, but these proportions, 50-50 relationships, 60-40 relationships, play a huge factor into what the overall piece is going to look like. All right, and now that I've got that, I can begin bringing this in. This doesn't really make an oblique shape, much more uh, flat. I kind of want to just push this even further in, but I feel like I don't really have the outward gesture on the body. I have the one, two, three, but it, this one's kind of going the wrong way. What I'm going to do is mask all this. Turn off my dynamic here. Because I can have a larger brush size. I'm going to push this forward. I think you can even see some of that dictated here in the posture of the character. See how these legs kind of jut forward, and this feels like the knee is forward. Not so strict and straight. See here, it's obviously clearly very bent. So I'm going to continue with that.
If you do your own texture on 3D elements, is, the, is there a way to change the color on the texture or no? Depending on what program you're using, but I'm assuming most of them, yes, you'll be able to uh, to change the 3D, uh, to change the color. I'll just size these hands very quickly. I feel like they're small yet large at the same time. These fingers are going to have to be far longer than I think that they are now. Uh, I will likely change them into a fist just because the the bulk of the model is in a fist. But what I'm going to do now is just give a couple joints in here to know where those are going to be. I'm going to really exaggerate them. Uh, one of my my first Nomen instructor, or first Nomen ZBrush instructor, is Maddie Spencer, who's a stream for us and done some events with us. She's awesome. But one of the things that she told me that stuck with me about doing hands is to imagine them, no matter if they're bones or robots or anything or whatever they are, creatures, to treat them like they're little robot fingers. Imagine all the mechanics that it takes to do a finger and how precise it needs to be to not make it look mushy. So that's why exaggerating it just a little bit will help to kind of get it in a better zone. I do want to kind of thicken this up because there's this weird relationship of the 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 uh, forearm is very, very tubular, so I'm going to get rid of some of what the uh, traditional forearm would have. And there's obviously going to be this kind of gauntlet bracer element that sits on top, but I don't want to have too much of this bony relationship there. As I do this, I'm also going to kind of start getting into this area. We do have this piece that needs to kind of be moved around. I'm looking at this angle here now, kind of trying to get a sense of what the uh, gesture of the leg is. You can see it's pretty round, which is not what mine is. Uh, so I'm going to kind of mask off the bottom of the leg here. And then we're going to start building up these thigh pads and bringing this in. This is way too long. Even on the inside, it's relatively bulbous, so we're going to take this and just extend it. Looking at this relationship here, another thing I want to pay attention to, this black layer, we'll take this layer now is what we'll look at, is looking at this silhouette change. So this, this, I'm going to remove these red lines that we drew before. Maybe just drawing this out very quickly. This is kind of where that is going to carve back. Looking at this shape, this negative shape that's being creative here, is what I really want to pay attention to. How big 
uh, is the hip. How far out does the hip jut? And what you can actually do just to, as an exercise or whatever, is you can just draw it. I'm drawing in the same color so you can't really see it. Go like this. Pull it off and you'll see this is the shape generally that I need to be creating. This is the negative space that it needs to be creating. So I don't need that right now, but what I can do here, I'm in here, I can also use any of these if I needed to, but I can tell you that I don't have that relationship right now, but I can tell you that it starts at this point, this point that we drew, which is actually up here, maybe a little higher. I can tell you that that is in a very wrong place right now. And there's a consistent smooth arc to look at so about here, which is right around here on the leg. So that's what I'm putting in is I'm just getting these shapes in very, very quickly. Almost like I'm, I'm marking a landmark and then I'm filling in the distance in between it. Now the back of the legs and the back is kind of an unknown. So I'm going to attempt to just do something that seems like it fits with the shapes. But uh, it's in there. Uh, we are using ZBrush. ZBrush is a digital sculpting package. It's going to be that thing here. Hide that for now. I think that's a decent start. I think we got to do a lot of work on these hands. They're still a little bigger than it may like look at first glance. Head, I think, is a little, it's hard to say, is it larger, is it smaller, something off with the head, it's missing something, obviously it's not at all the right shape, but there's something off, we are missing uh, this kind of scarf element, have I ever tried ZBrush Core Mini, do I recommend it, I've never tried it, uh, but if it is free, Right. So if you've never used ZBrush before, uh, I absolutely recommend it because I think there's no other good way to get into ZBrush, especially if you've never tried it. I know it has a lot of good features there, so uh, I would certainly recommend it, yeah, especially if you're a beginner. I think the big thing that I'm noticing about the mask is the chin. If I look at the chin, pointed. Mine is not pointed. So let's get that in there this down start getting this it also has a very clear jaw and look at that it's pretty interesting to take this shape it kind of goes up and around that's this is not an accident when a little action line or a, a detail coincides with a form line that's an intentional thing that Bjorn's doing here you can see him actually drawing our eye down from the top of the head here through this gold through the chin down through these little areas here and down through the chest, which is a really nice way to draw the eye from the head to the through the body. So we need to get that. I need to bring in that element. I'm just carving with the Damien Standard Brush. I'm not trying to get the mask shape yet. I mean, I could attempt to do something like this. That might help a little bit just as far as easing some of those like initial concerns but i think what i'm really noticing is that the helmet i have is far too thin this distance is uh pretty wide whereas mine feels maybe not like that i'm gonna go like this you can also use this see-through feature in zbrush which is pretty cool I think it's more that 
maybe not so much that the width of the helmet is the problem, it's that the width of the helmet begins to get into these larger shapes, which we don't have right now. So by pulling something like this out, the edge of the helmet can appear to be wider. It's going to help us quite a bit. All right, everybody, we are about halfway into our stream today. Do you guys have any questions about anything regarding Nomen? If you have any questions regarding classes, curriculums, uh, programs, uh, experience at Nomen, I'm a Nomen alumni, uh, so I'm happy to answer questions like about that. Uh, if you guys have any questions though about anything, uh, upcoming projects, upcoming things, I am happy to happy to chat. having a discussion in my class the other day about Tenet, the movie. Seems like some people did not like Tenet. I really liked Tenet, though. I think Christopher Nolan's a great film director, and I love watching his movies over and over and over and seeing all the new things in them every single time. some initial shapes in here and this is not something that i'm like okay i nailed it guys this is the final version uh this is something that right now is like okay we're just kind of getting everything in so see notice how like this this is where i was struggling is defining the shape was hard but we saw that this jaw goes up and creates this form or has a detail in this form but that form extends into this so that means this line needs to extend through the back of the head. And that's how we're gonna try to get that relationship or understand that relationship, how high it goes up, how tapered this is. It's probably key element right here. What do I think should be absolutely in a portfolio? Uh, without knowing the type of work that you're working, you're talking about character art, concept art, environment art, whatever, the, the number one thing that is absolutely key in your portfolio is only your best work. Only your best work. If you show anything that is off or isn't your best work or you just thought was cool but isn't actually as good as your other stuff, uh, you're probably not going to get a job because of that. That may sound harsh, but it's the truth, because if uh, you don't put just only your best work in there, uh, people are going to question your taste or your abilities as to why that other thing's in there. Really digging working on this concept so far. I think I've not really captured this area at all. Obviously quite a bit of work to do. But even if we go from our previous saves, so this is save three, uh, if I open up save two, it's a save two. So progressing, for, we'll go we'll go through our standard progression we typically do here. This is what we started with today. This is the concept we're working off from Bjorn Hury. Um, phase two, right? You can see us basically taking it, blocking in some of the initial shapes. What we did is we took a little bit of time to evaluate the concept, colored in the big blocks of shapes so we could understand the actual size and the relationship to other shapes and then we've been continuing to work on that so from here to here let's just click the same thing so that it's the same bits but you can start to see it coming together and we're getting a little bit more personality but not just personality the big things you're going to notice is the silhouette is going to start changing and getting more exciting which is good i think these little horns are sticking out a little far but one side, maybe not. One side, maybe a little too far. So I might just uh, a little bit. Yeah, no. Hmm. Um, 
you're planning on joining our foundation in art and design course, awesome. But you're having trouble with finding a place near the school. Do you know if there's any student residence or any way you can get some help? Any website? Uh, you should get in contact with our student services person. Uh, I would reach out to them and they can help uh, help you find an apartment or a place to live. Student services. Uh, if you've already been speaking to our admissions team, which I'm assuming you have, considering you're talking about starting the foundation program, um, your admissions advisor should be able to help you. What can I tell you about the teachers at Noman? What can I tell you about the teachers at Noman? Let's see. Well, I think the number one thing to say about the teachers at Noman is that, you know, they're working professionals. That's the biggest thing I think you can say. And that should say a lot because uh, for myself, I'm somebody who went to, I'm a Noman alumni, uh, but I went to college at a four year degree, about 10 years, 12 years ago. 13 years ago now um, at a bigger school that had a degree. No one has degrees now, but they didn't 10 years ago. And um, I learned very quickly that, well, I guess I'll just tell you the experience of me going to a college that was not Noman. Uh, very quickly, I was asked in seven months to a year of doing 3D because the faculty wasn't very large to help teach some of the classes, uh, you know, kind of be a, P, a TA, a teacher's assistant. And at that point, my learning there uh, basically stopped as I was now teaching people when I'd only really been doing it for a year maximum. And that's not at all like Noman. Uh, that will never happen. And be learning from working professionals that's a huge element when it comes to networking right getting your first job many of Noman students first jobs come from the teachers every class that you take is much like an interview because the professional that you're speaking with that's teaching you and it's kind of your chance to give them to show them your work ethic especially if it's in the subject that you're interested in So that's one of the first things I think I can tell you is that they're very different than the average college because of that. Let's mask this. The second thing I can tell you is that we always are keeping up with our curriculum. This has to do with the teachers as well, but but we're always keeping up with the industry. No one's number one goal, aside from training students, is to serve the industry. And that means whatever the industry is using, software, whatever that is, styles, techniques, uh, no one's going to teach it. So that means our curriculum are, uh, is always being updated, and that means our teachers are often, uh, you know, we're getting the, trying to get the best teacher for a subject. It's somewhat different than, you know, a traditional college that has faculty that's always, always teaching the same classes over and over and over. Our curriculum is always being updated. No problem. Happy to talk about anything you guys want. Especially like answering questions or questions, portfolio questions. Enjoy answering those if it's helpful to people. 
I'm hitting a bit of a low poly count here where I can't really do everything that I need to do. At this point, I am going to duplicate this arm so I can kind of get that going in. I'm going to duplicate the whole mesh. So we have two of this. I already have the arms poly group, but I only want the tops here. So I'm going to go down to our lower poly groups. Probably about this is what I'm going to be okay with. And I don't actually want the hand because I just don't need it. So I'm going to remove it. Mask it. Invert it. I'm going to group visible here. I'm going to split groups. This one I'm going to delete because I don't need it. This one I'm going to keep and I'm going to inflate it. subtly inflate it here even though I don't think it needs to be eh, maybe a little bit we're going to create that very harsh horizontal line just a key feature of some of this character that there's these very intentional lines for all the beautiful flowing shapes there are is this kind of subtle element of like a rigidity to it with this and this and some of these things in there. And I think that's a cool element that I definitely don't want to lose. What can I say about the students? Uh, Noman students are amazing. Uh, they are incredibly driven. They're inc incredibly passionate about what they're doing. Uh, I think you see that in the, in the, what's the term? The proof is in the pudding. But uh, if you watch our student reels, if you see much about Nomen, um, obviously, you know, I think we have great programs and teachers and, you know, I think we're doing the right things there. But at the end of the day, it's down to the students to do the work. And uh, the students who are passionate are the ones who are... Uh, really killing it like they're really 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 talented uh, every term i'm gonna put this on double-sided every term i'm just impressed with how good the work is every single term how much better it gets every year uh it's just incredibly impressive so my hat's always off to them Also very cool. I think I've met really a lot of really good friends at, at Noman or through Noman. People who are Noman students, people who are going to just as individual a la carte classes. Met some really cool people there. Do I feel like I was prepared skill and workload wise when you were first brought on board to work on Iron Man? That's a great question. Um, I prepared skill and work wise. I think I was prepared skill wise. I think I was prepared workload wise. I don't think what I was prepared for was the level of scrutiny that a character like that takes from the studio from the artists, from the fans. Uh, that's what I definitely wasn't prepared for. This one's going to take a little bit longer with some of these such a round shape and out of this round shape you can see it like emerges 
it's going to take a little while to really figure out. I think it just needs more geometry too. But we can get a nice starting point. We can come in with our Z, let's see, project Z modeler brush. Thank you. And uh, you can hover over this and you insert, right? Insert an edge loop. Oh, it has subdivision levels. I don't want those subdivision levels, so let's delete that. So you can add edge loops if we need to here. Let's capture that a little better. What I'm trying to capture here is kind of a very finessed shape where uh, well, if we go back into Photoshop, for example, what you'll see is there's a very clear peak at the bottom which is right here of this object and it has a central core shadow that's or highlight that's running through here so it has this type of a shape to it and that's what i'm trying to capture here you can see i don't really have enough geometry to do that though and so that's what i'm doing here is i'm adding in edge loops to attempt to capture that So I probably need to add in a couple more edge loops here and maybe here as well. And start to understand what it is that's making this shape. I don't have a ton of information on this side. You know, this doesn't necessarily reflect what's over here. To me, from the profile, it kind of feels like the, the arm is going to come through straight down. This is this. And this might come like this. It has to go on top of it, though, but it might kind of be... like oh that's things in the way this a profile so this is just hovering over and then it kind of looks like it cuts back and then up again but that feels like an interesting this so that's what i'm trying to figure out is where this is and this kind of wraps around the back it looks like something's happening here hard to tell There's also a very clear point here, which I think is cool, which is where um, there's a very clear point here where this, you see it kind of seems like it's intentionally tapering here. So there's an outline there. An outline like this. There's this sort of subtle, he's doing it with his brush strokes, but he's also hinting at this shadow. This is in shadow, this is a mid, and this is a highlight. So that there could be a form like this. So we turn on our black layer, what you'll see 
is it could look like there's some sort of form in here that does this. And uh, I'm trying to evaluate right now where that comes from. So this might be a little bit of a longer one that I might need to spend a ton, some time in. What I'll probably do is just do this, 64. And mesh. Take these pieces. Debating, like, do I want to do that or do I want to just like? Uh... Bring in a loop. I'm just going to dynamesh it. Be a little easier to figure out for me what is actually happening. thick enough so i can turn that off now this will just help me kind of define what these shapes are and so i can just use you know traditional sculpting tools so there's gonna be a form in here i'm just gonna smooth the whole thing out see it's starting to get really kind of warped and off center and i don't think that's what the intention was based on what this is i think it kind of needs to get almost warped back into shape that's also going to align more with what this forearm was doing This is This is actually what one of my favorite parts of doing something from a concept is I'm learning right now. I'm learning what the shape is. Is it is it possible to make this shape? How could you make this shape? Uh, you know, it's like a puzzle. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And if it isn't possible, what I would do in production, if, if I had you know, access to the concept artist. Hmm? It doesn't look great. This was not intending to be a huge piece on top, so this is getting way too large. Please. Back. See this? So this little thing that sticks off that he's got, he's not in this other thing. It's starting to take away a little something. There's something in here that's just off.
think that should not be so pointy. It doesn't really fit the character. Maybe it's more like this shape down here. It does have something that appears to kind of almost come over like this. You can see that here. So that could be a wrap. So there's another form. You know, maybe this is actually doing this shape. This is the cutout up front. This goes here. Maybe it's, a, we'll just exaggerate it, but maybe it's intending to do this shape is kind of what I'm feeling like is going on. So if that is, it's not intending to be a big peak like I had it, it's intending to be this. More of a right angle. is probably about as far as I need to go for right now. You know, as again, the point of this is not to sculpt the whole character today. If you were hoping that that was what was going to happen on stream, I apologize for disappointing you. Also notice I didn't have symmetry on, so I can just uh, work on the one. We're going to get close to a point where it's like, okay, I see where this is going to go. Now we can just detail this out and get into a little further uh, the stuff I'm going to take this I'm going to uh, just mask it take that and I'm going to do uh, just a quick group split you can also do a, do a split hidden it's over here so I can delete that oh, as I duplicated it And then I will uh, Z plugin, Subtool Master, Mirror. I'm going to uh, merge it into the same thing. And voila. And we have this. You can also use a couple other ways to do that. But that's that's one of the easiest ways to especially make sure that it's uh, going to stay in the same location. I think that we pull these shoulders apart a little bit more. The posture, I feel like, needs to come forward. some of these other elements in. I'm going to start working on these legs quite a bit because obviously they're just uh, very tubular and we haven't really done anything with them. So that's what the next step is going to be. We're about two hours into our stream today. We're going to be streaming till one o'clock or around one o'clock. Another save. We're going to go ahead and load up our previous tool three to kind of give us a little bit of some insight into where we are. I'm going to take this and just close it, though. Getting in the way. Um, so we have started today. 
with this. We took the, um, the concept from Bjorn Huri, um, broke it apart, painted it on top of it into these different blocks so that it's a little easier to understand as far as uh, what some of the shapes are, how the shapes relate, um, you know, just general uh, form understanding. I've been going back and forth into Photoshop quite a bit as well, uh, you know, just to do some paint overs to understand what these shapes are going to be, what the sizes are, what the relationships are. Uh, so we can really start to break this character down into its fundamental uh, core forms. And then we're taking that and bringing it into ZBrush. And this is where we started. And we went uh, to here, well, here, to here, to here, to here. So we're making some good progress today. A different type of progress you know if you're doing something for concept work or for yourself or something like that often it's a little easier to make faster progress and that's because um, you're doing it for yourself and there's nothing to really tell you if what you're doing is wrong not looking the way that it should whereas if you're working on a, you know a piece that has art or it's an anatomy study or it's something like that uh, there is ways to tell you if you're doing it wrong or it's not looking good because it won't look like the piece. So it's just kind of a different way to work or a different process. But getting our base mesh in is going to be a really important element. The next step is going to be these legs. We're going to put on some of these pads here. We're going to make these uh, knee pads quite a bit bigger, right? Talk about that. Get these boots going and uh, continue with this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I think I'm actually going to just knee pad sizes. So I'm looking at this profile here. So if I take some of this off, I'm looking at this relationship here, from here to here, I see this long smooth shape and it juts out pretty harshly and cuts back pretty harshly but then it's got to go back into another smooth uh which this is kind of attempting i think to to give a sense of what the profile should be like and so i can tell it's overlapping a little bit here because of what he's drawn uh, but it still feels like it's probably going to overlap quite a bit here so profile wise what that means to me is these boots can probably come out quite a bit. And there's hide these hands. I'm gonna hide these little pieces here for now. I bulk out the back of this a little bit. Front has a very anatomical shape, which this doesn't really, so I'm gonna remove some of that. Easiest way to do that is just mask it. Maybe I'll widen it shortly we'll get to the shape of the toes here in a minute but man, that might, might be a really easy way to do this too to get that initial size I go a little fast, please. It's 2 a.m. I want to sleep. Uh, I think you can come back next week if you want to see what the progress is. We'll be working on this character for several weeks in a row. Thank you. 
we're just smoothing all this out. It's getting a little tube-like, but that's okay, because I'm trying to actually get rid of some of what was already there. I want to be able to define my own shapes in here. It's been a little difficult to do that. I have no idea what the butt is going to look like, what the back's going to look like. I might actually just smooth this out a little bit and I'm going to add a cube in here. If you have a request for tips, Mr. Sampson, I'm happy to answer them. And this is just an art jam. We're just hanging out making stuff. This is supposed to be fun. It's not about making a final project. This is making the calves look very short, so I'm going to have to push this up a little bit. How could I get into digital sculpting at home? Uh, ZBrush Core Mini is probably the best way to do that. It's a free program. It's a very trimmed down version of this. But it is free.
And then duplicate that across using the Z plugin. Same, same thing as before. I'm using the Z uh, plugin master, subtool master, and then just mirroring it across. I'm going to get some of these other little hanging areas. Actually, I'll wait till we do these pads. I think the legs are still slightly too thin. Uh, I think there's some overall proportional issue that I'm not able to see right now, so we'll probably evaluate that a little more next week. Uh, I want to get these pads on the legs, and I want to, this is like way too long. So I'm going to just uh, make another cube. Uh, you'll see all the extra geometry there. So I'm just going to take this and be a, turn it into a Dynamesh object. It's a little high, so I'm going to turn it to 64. That's 644 Dynamesh. There we go. So this is going to be another piece of this. I'm going to rotate this around. at this point beforehand so I can kind of see it all at the same time. This is a block out so I'm not trying to make the final piece right now. Gonna get some of the planes that are there. A 
little further than I wanted it to be. A little better. So this is somewhat important. I don't know what this is going to look like on the side. I feel like it should maybe go a little more on the side, just based on what I'm seeing here glancing angle like it should be a little more rotated which means maybe it goes a little further back do you know that these underlying pieces look like they might stop a little bit here so this is where we have to evaluate what's what's made of what which is a really challenging aspect of of doing this kind of work I just want to carve this down a little. You know, there's probably a cut in here. here we're gonna have some shapes that are gonna go on this So these aren't perfect, but they're getting into the right spot. They're kind of doing their job, right? Which is helping me evaluate all the other things that are going to be on this. I'm going to duplicate this piece. And I'm, well, we'll squish it this way first. This is kind of a detail, but it is a, an element that can be helpful to uh, evaluate size or shape or something. So I'm going to put it in.
So I see that these are kind of sitting in here. They should be this long. This is another good way to evaluate, like, is this working? Is the size of this seam about correct? On this side, it's like pointing to this line where the gray is or green is. Rolled over my headphones. Um, and this is actually below it. So it's like it should be a little lower, I think, but they feel too long right now. But what's something I'm looking at is this distance here. Is that too short on my model? Here it seems like it's about the same. Here it seems like it's this is like it's uh there's more distance here than there is here. That's okay. So I'm just trying to evaluate. Does that mean potentially? The whole arm should go outward make up that distance. I think maybe so. Then here, stroke replay last. Put this in the back and I can overlay it. We'll probably do that next time. Uh, we only got about 40, 30 minutes left in the stream, and I'm probably going to end it a little early today. We'll pick it up next Wednesday. I'm not going to make the sword of the shield yet because I think it needs a little more time. It just really feels like it needs to be more substantial. What I'm going to start doing here is I'm going to start introducing some color. So you can load in textures, you can load in objects, you can use Spotlight, you can use all kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to load Spotlight. Oh, that's just the load Spotlight. I'm going to load um, a texture, I'm going to import the actual image. Let's get these out of the way.
For some reason, my brain is failing me and I can't remember. Shift to the Z, that's what it was. There it is. Another way to do this inside ZBrush is just use Spotlight. Nice thing with this is you can color pick, and this is the only reason I really wanted it in here. All these different things. Delete items, right? Back. There we go. Now I can color pick from this. Well, I think I have to hit Shift Z, Z. See, it doesn't now color pick from it. For some reason, there's a, I think there is a button or like a preference of a spotlight snapshot. There's a way to do this, I think, but um, to color pick it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and like choose some of these grays. So. This gray is what we're going to fill this object with. Come in here. Choose this goldish. We'll make that. Just use the helmet for now. Color, fill object. Choose this red. Make that one of these. Color fill object. And then I want this olive, which I'm going to select this in advance. Olive object. I've kind of got all these things. I don't really need this anymore because I already have it up on the other things. So I can just delete it. We don't have to worry about spotlight anymore. Probably it's a cool feature. Uh, it's got a lot of interesting things in it, but it is a uh, can be kind of a challenge to work with, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this stuff and I'm going to start uh, adding some subdivisions, and we're going to start introducing color into this because color can play a big role in helping us figure out our proportions. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this before we get into this too far as our most recent one. I'm going to close this one. So our general gray. I'm going to fill this with that gray. Oops. Object. And I'm going to start doing that to all of these. Make a hotkey for this if it's easier for you. So maybe I do Alt C, the fill color. This one. Probably all of the things that I'm seeing right now. If I move this around, none of the other things start changing, which is good. Uh, so I'm just going to start blocking in this color. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just do really quickly this to RGB only, not to host. Let me sculpting. Just get some of these shapes in. At this point, I can also use this as a point to block in the shape. So uh, I like to use color quite a bit to replace sculpting when it's a difficult thing to sculpt. But what it's going to be really useful for is more for the proportions. If we're trying to make this accurate and this isn't, you know, our own interpretation of something, uh, this is where it gets much, much harder. You know, as we get closer, or we'll want to get closer and closer to this, make it 100% accurate. 
right? So this is where I'm going to use color to say this is roughly the size and the shape of this mask. That there's this gold that's going to run up along this thing. taking care with this i'm not going to be super anal about it but it is something i need i'll probably add in this thing later otherwise it's just gonna be like a big cube that's sitting off the top so i'm going to avoid that subdivide this Making sure it's not destroying anything. I think that needs to be bigger and bulkier. We'll deal with that a little bit more later. Get this gold in. Use this again to block out different stuff. I'm just going to quickly uh, start coloring some elements in where this should be or could be. Obviously, some big shape differences that are going to have to happen in here at some point. The shoulders, especially. All the different variances of things that are going to happen in here. Hint at those right now. This is one of the things that color helps do quite a bit, is it helps you or can help you move into the next phase. when you're planning out you can sculpt all this in obviously uh, but if you're planning out shapes you're planning out forms uh, it can be easier to just draw it so give you a better sense of gestures the forms maybe that are going to write on top rather than spending so much time sculpting it and then moving it around. It's kind of nice because it also just gets you even closer to the actual, to the final.
shape is a little off. I wasn't really recognizing that until now. This whole torso feels a little too long, so I'll probably end up adjusting that and uh, crunching it. Meaning like this all, whole area kind of needs to go like this. So let's just do it. Chest feels a little tall though, so maybe let's start it that way. smoothing on my poly paint so i'm going to remove that and this is sometimes also a little easier like how i had sculpted that that in sometimes it can be a little easier to just um, paint and sculpt at the same time to do like a shape of something okay, do this thing Back of this is all going to be this red. There's some sort of a red pinstripe that runs through here. Not all the way, so I'm going to have to figure out exactly what it is that's making the pinstripe. Because it's on both sides, inside and the outside of the leg. Of this gold. This gold there. This is going a little low with the gold, so we're going to bring this up. Across. We're getting pretty close. We are missing a couple. Like you can kind of see now in the back. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this piece. Move it in the back. Really widen it up quite a bit. Looks like there's two of them though. Why didn't up either way? Something that's going to be lower than this. About here. Don't exactly know what it is. There's two of them. They're obviously pretty close to the body, so I need to figure out this piece is not totally working for me. It also feels like it's a little too tight to the body, so I'm going to push it off. Switch back to 
into sculpting mode so I can bring this in. All right, this is starting to come together. Obviously, there's a lot of details we got to do, a lot of lines we got to do together. Um, but I think you can start to see the semblance of how this is going to get to where it needs to go. A lot of work to do. Struggling a little bit with this head. But I think we're getting there at least to the point where we can start evaluating. Obviously, we can come in here, choose like a dark, way, dark color here. Another thing we can do is even just start painting in some of these details. Like there's some big uh, form there that I'm missing. This is the actual sculpt that we have with no, no color on it right now. I'm going to draw in some of this. Lock in maybe where some of those rib cage elements are going to go. lines on the helmet will help quite a bit or the, the dots on the helmet i think there's still quite a bit to do here but i think we're in a really good starting position i'm not feeling pretty good about first day block out of kind of getting something that's starting to work Obviously, like I said, plenty of work to do. Not saying it's anywhere close to done, but to go from nothing to uh, something, which is nice. It's a nice feeling to start progressing on that. how far that red cut in there doesn't quite have the persona yet doesn't quite have the some of the bulk that this character is really feeling so that's something I'm probably going to iterate towards some of the weight 
some of the mechanics that this feels like it has. I have that little piece here. But I think that's the hand. It's hard to tell hand versus gauntlet. I feel like this is a little awkward in here. we're getting there I think as we start to flesh this out and get to see some more of the details start to appear over the next couple of weeks we're gonna see uh, some of this evolve obviously but we're gonna see uh, what needs to be adjusted typically for me I can work about three hours which is conveniently the amount of time in the stream before I need to take a break of just getting a fresh eye So we're just about there. Arms don't feel right. There's something about the arms. Maybe they're long enough. See how far down this fist is? Top of the knee, top of the knee. This one's a little lower though. Just drag that all the way down. See, like what I'm looking at now is the relationships that are gonna start lining up. See where this ends? Is right around this peak. This is what I'm seeing right now as I'm realizing this shape. We'll go into Photoshop. It's easier to draw. Close this. This shape here, well, horizontal line, these divots at the bottom are roughly at the same point, and they end right around here, which is where this shape is happening. Mine, and, and here, is way higher. These rings are about the elbows, whereas my elbows and rings currently are here. So this is where I need to start just figuring out, probably just doing lines like this and saying, okay, where is this relating to in the body? So the bottom of the rib cage is here. Okay, that feels good. This is right around there. Kind of, that feels okay. This appears to be much longer than I expected it to be. Maybe it's because mine is thin. Thicken it up. We'll probably see is at the top of this. The ring should be at the elbow joint. Show that piece again and say the top of this should also start at the ring. Piece. I'm sure you're there. Just 
it's things are probably too small. Save this as our fifth iteration. And then I'm going to wrap up because this is uh, right near the end of the stream. And I think we just hit a really good point of being able to evaluate where we're going to end up with this thing. Uh, I do think that this. It's a little longer. I think that's getting there. Let's load up the last one that we just did so we can have a little bit of a walkthrough. Here, where we started, worked our way from here, here, to here. Let's go through these correctly. Hmm. 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 Let's turn these colors off so we can also see. This is kind of the back and forth that we're starting to see where we're really going to start going back and forth, evaluating uh, you know, the real shapes that are in the this is the base mesh, right? We're getting everything in. And now we're going to start doing exactly what we just did from this one to this one, which is really evaluating the concept and saying, what is it in the concept that makes it look like that, that makes it appealing? And that's where we're going to break down this and kind of get this, this next level of improvement. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm excited to, to work on this. I think it's going to be fun. Um, and I'm going to start wrapping up the stream. Um, as you might see in the chat right now, uh, tomorrow night at 7.30, we have an awesome event with Geo Napkill uh, doing sculpting in VR. He's going to be sculpting in Adobe Medium. He's amazing. So definitely check that out. Uh, definitely check that out tomorrow on this channel, wherever you're watching it, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Mastering VR Sculpting using Adobe Medium. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, thank you very much for joining today. I'm going to wrap up the stream here. Have a wonderful evening, afternoon, or morning, whatever time it is for you. And I will see you guys here next week from 10 to 1 Pacific time.